especially as we gather together today for worship and fellowship on this Sunday morning. And as we gather together and prepare our hearts and minds, I will invite you to stand if you are able, and let us join in our call to worship. There is no God like our God. Praise God's name forever. Sing with joy, pray without ceasing. Bless God, sun up to sun down. Praise God's name forever. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise that you can find in the red hymnal on page 128. Remember for friends and family. Others? 
But do let us remember one another. Let us remember family and friends and neighbors and thought and prayer. Uh, those that are ill, uh, recovering, recovering from surgeries. Uh, so do let us remember one another in thought and prayer. At this time, do we have unspoken prayer concerns that we would like to recognize by hand? Well, as we do, let us take a few moments and go to God in our silent prayer time. Dear Lord God, there is no God like you. In praise and thanksgiving, we come before you ready to learn of your power, ready to follow your path for our lives. Through days of jubilation, as well as dejection, help us realize your influence in the world. We pray and ask simply for ears to hear eyes to see and minds to comprehend the blessings that you bestow and now at this time we join all of our voices together to pray the prayer that has been taught to us in saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, as we gather together, you can find our announcements in your bulletin. Uh, just to let you know, we will have three different sign-up sheets making its way making their way around the congregation uh, one is just looking for volunteers if you'd like to ring a salvation army bell uh, in december uh, out front of walmart so that is one sign-up sheet uh, another sign-up sheet is for poinsettias for christmas if you'd like to place a poinsettia in honor of somebody or in memory of someone uh, please sign up for that and then also just a reminder that next Sunday after church, we will gather downstairs for our fellowship Thanksgiving lunch. And things are provided by the church, but we are passing around um, a sign-up sheet for side dishes and desserts. Uh, but you don't have to necessarily sign up to bring anything. We always appreciate it, but we do want to see you join us next Sunday after church downstairs for lunch. So those are the three sign-up sheets. Today, November 17th, just a reminder, today is the last day we are taking orders for Christmas meals. Uh, if you know of a neighbor, somebody that doesn't get out, uh, we are taking orders for Christmas meals from our parish. So please let me know if there are meals needed. Let me know about that. Also, this evening, you are invited if you'd like to come out at five o'clock downstairs. We will be packing our Christmas shoe boxes and getting ready uh, to get those all packed up and sent out. So if you'd like to help pack shoe boxes tonight, we will meet downstairs at five o'clock. Uh, once again, a thank you for Uncore donations, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, 
for hurricane relief. That information is in your bulletin. A big thank you to everybody for helping with that. And then as you turn to the back of the bulletin, just a reminder, if you'd like to sing at the Advent Sing on December 1st, uh, our parish Advent Sing will be here on December 1st at 6 o'clock. And Good Shepherd is responsible to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing and the First Noel. So if there's anybody out there that would like to sing that um, little choir we could get together for December 1st, uh, you are more than welcome. Do take time to look over the announcements on the back of the bulletin. Uh, you'll see information of Christmas cantata practice and the Christmas cantata that will be held here. Also, this coming week, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, our Pastor Parish Relations Committee, we will have a meeting tomorrow night. Wednesday night, uh, finance, trustees, and permanent fund. And then you will see the next Sunday all the information for the Thanksgiving lunch. And then also, just to let you know, and as I said uh, last Sunday, things are faster and faster. We will celebrate Thanksgiving and eat around the table downstairs, and then it's after we eat, it's time to get ready for Christmas. So we are inviting people to come back upstairs after lunch and help us get the sanctuary ready for Advent and Christmas, as December 1st is the first Sunday of Advent. But do take time to look over all the information, uh, upcoming events. I will point out as well, on November 26th, we will have a family movie night downstairs at 6 o'clock. So please tell family and friends and neighbors of our family movie night on November 26th. Please also remember, continue uh, the foster closet, the angels out on the, on the tree. So please remember that as well. Are there other announcements or celebrations anybody would like to share? Mama. Mama. In addition to the angel program, um, anybody who's on Facebook, if you check out the uh, Foster Closet page, you will see that we have um, an Amazon wish list for a lot of items that we include in some bags that we put together for the NECO, which is a foster agency. So we, I think we put together about 100, 120 bags. So there's lots of items there that if you uh, feel led to, you could purchase, and that way we can have all the things we need to uh, supply for all those kids who are in the foster program. That's right. Yeah. Please remember the Amazon wish list for faithful, faithful fostering closet as well. All right. If there's nothing else, I will extend the invitation. Anybody that would like to come up front and sing in today's choir. We are singing out of the red hymnal on page 474.
this time the children are invited to come forward for children's moments this morning. Hey, Lydia made me feel better. I thought, holy cow, I really did like wash up and I'm clean and stuff. Keep going farther and farther away. Okay, Jackson and Milo up here will be all set. You do it, we come sit by me, okay? We go, oh, Lydia's in. Okay, there we go. All right, so today we're going to talk about, so we know we have some big holidays coming up, right? Yeah, big holidays. Pastor Matt was talking about one. He said we have Thanksgiving coming up, and then after that, what is it? Christmas. Christmas, that's our next big holiday after that. So, <coughs> you ready to put your Christmas stuff up? There you go. That's all right. Listen, you're allowed to do it. It's the holiday season, right? So, you put decorations? Cool. So, we're, we're going to talk about something that happens at Christmas. You need a star. Well, yeah, I don't think that's a great idea. You can definitely put a star on top of your tree. So the one of the things that we happen have happened at Christmas time, at this time of the year, is gifts, right? We're always concerned about what are we going to give somebody, what should we give them as a gift, whatever. Um, but and, and that's a great thing. I'm not saying we shouldn't think about that because that's a great thing to think about. But one thing we can think about in conjunction with gifts is the gifts that we have every single day. And sometimes we can do it in just a minute, Lila. Um, the gifts that we have every single day, and this sometimes we don't even think about them as gifts, do we? Because we just know they're there, right? So when you wake up in the morning, we open our eyes. That was a gift, right? God gave you a new day to go out and do all the things that you need to do and the things that He wants you to do, and so that's a really gift, good gift that it just happens, and there we are, and we don't even really think about it much, right? So let's try to remember every morning when we wake up, it's a new day. Thank you, God, for that gift, right? All right, so then what do we do? We get something to eat, something to drink, right? And it's just there. Mama takes care of it. Dad takes care of it. We take care of it ourselves. The food's there. Somebody bought it. Somebody prepared it. And it's a great gift that we get. And we're lucky to have it every single day. And it's a gift that we should be thankful for, right? So see, we're tying all these things in. Lots and lots of gifts. The gift of the nice sunshine. Today we have it. The gift of the rain the other day because... Rain is needed, even if we've had a lot of it. This year we haven't had a lot, so it's a big, big gift for us. But um, it's always a gift because we need the rain so that our, our everything that can grow and that we can have our water source. So everything that we have, it's okay. <laughs> Happy went outside, y'all. Yeah. Um, but all these things that we have are great gifts. And so we need to remember that... Um, in this season where we're going to be talking about gifts a lot and being thankful that uh, just simple little things like that are huge gifts that we have and we are very lucky and blessed to have them and so who do we get all those gifts from if not for god we wouldn't have those right sorry I, uh, linda was about ready to answer where do we get all those things linda <laughs> okay that's all right okay so we're going to say a prayer and thank god for the many gifts that we have Lord, we thank you for all the gifts that you give us, the, the simple ones, the big ones, all the things that we have and we're so lucky and blessed to receive from you. Thank you for loving us, your children, and giving us all the things that we need. In Jesus' name we praise and thank you. Amen. Thank you. Kids are invited to go to Children's Church this morning. And just a reminder, if there's anybody out there that would like to help with Sunday school class for the kids, we're looking for some extra teacher volunteers for our youth Sunday school. And then also, speaking of um, some extra just information, if there's questions, comments, anything about um, next Sunday for the Thanksgiving meal, um, Please reach out to Crystal and ask her. Uh, so she'll be more than happy for some extra help. So please remember that invitation. But as the kids make their way to Children's Church, we will invite the ushers to come forward to collect our tithes and offerings this morning. Let us pray. Today, dear God, we offer you our sacrifice of time, energy, and love 
knowing full well they are mere tokens of the awesome faith you inspire within us. We pray that you accept these gifts, that they may continue the good work in Christ, in our church, in our community, and around the world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We lift up all of these things as we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? 
replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. I ask all of us this morning, if you could know the future, would you want to? I am sure that many of us have thought about that. If only I knew tomorrow's lottery numbers, then I could be a millionaire. If we knew the future, then we could place a wager on the winner of the World Series or any other sporting event. And yes, it would be nice if we were a gambler to know the future. But it wouldn't really be gambling then, would it? If we could know the future, not only the good but also the bad, would we want to? Would we want to have prior knowledge of who we were going to marry, if, when, or how many children we were going to have, or knowing about illnesses, accidents, deaths of family and friends. In our reading today, we join Jesus at the end of a long and busy day. He's been debating with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. The sun is getting lower in the sky, and Jesus emerges from the temple with a group of his disciples. As they are walking, one of the disciples turn around, blocks the sun with his hand, taps Jesus on the shoulder, and motions for him to look at the temple. Pointing to the massive structure, the disciple says in verse 1, What large stones and what large buildings? It is as if the disciple is asking Jesus to marvel at the magnitude of the temple. The stones were huge. Many were the size of half of a semi-truck trailer. But the disciple is talking to Jesus. Would Jesus really be amazed by a bunch of stacked rocks? Now, before we scold the disciple too much, consider how often we find comfort in human accomplishments. Jesus then replies to the, the astonished disciple, Sure, I see it, but to tell you the truth, it will crumble. And then there is a short pause, and the disciple's face drops. And finally, the two continue on their walk, with the rest of the group. And then later, Jesus and the disciples cross over to the Mount of Olives, which faces the temple, and there we have Peter and Andrew, James and John, that inner circle of disciples, and they are huddled up, talking about the earlier statement, and then they begin to argue back and forth like a bunch of schoolboys. And then one of them eventually says, well, let's just go ask and ask Jesus. The disciples run over to Jesus and ask two questions. They not only want to know when the temple will crumble, but also what signs will signal the event. Now let us remember, when is important to us. Because when allows us to plan and gives us a sense of control. Signs give us warning that our time is almost up. 
Signs are like the light that appears at our dashboard right before we run out of gas. We know that the tank will only take us so far, but this light reminds us that the end is near. We cannot put things off any longer. Unfortunately, few things give us a fresh start like a tank full of gas. Jesus does not give the disciples the answer that they are looking for. Instead, he tells them to beware of false prophets and false signs. There will be wars, there will be divided kingdoms and earthquakes and famines, but these are not the signs to look for. Even today, some people associate wars and natural disasters with end times. And most likely there are people out there somewhere right now saying that the world as we know it will come to an end this year. But I believe Jesus is simply telling the disciples, you will hear a lot of bad stuff, but take courage and stay the course. Jesus knows the struggles that he and his disciples will face. Jesus knows that his struggles will lead him to the cross. Jesus knows that when the disciples accepted their call to follow him, he was signing their death warrants. And just like a ship headed straight into a hurricane, Jesus calls his disciples to stay on track and keep the course. He doesn't promise that everything will be okay. If we could know the future, would we want to? It is an interesting question to ask, but pointless. Jesus never discloses when the temple will be destroyed. He only gives examples of false signs. By warning the disciples of false signs, he was encouraging them to not give up or look for easy answers. For us, we cannot know the future. Jesus simply calls us to follow him. Jesus has called us to live as he did, regardless of life's circumstances. When false prophets appear, be close enough to God and Christ to know the difference. When there is war, find ways to make peace. When nations rise against nations, strive for reconciliation over revenge. During earthquakes and other natural disasters, help to heal and rebuild. During times of famine, help feed. Jesus was right. These signs might be only the beginning of birth pains, but the call to discipleship is still the same. All the prior knowledge in the world means nothing without strength and courage. So for us, as we go through life, let us walk in faith and have courage to stay the course. Amen. This morning, our hymn of invitation, you can find in the red hymn on page 357. You're invited to stand if you're able and let us join our voices in singing together.
today, brothers and sisters, may the Holy One, the rock of our salvation, the mother of sorrow and joy, the parent of the risen Christ, bless us now. Join together in faith to work for truth and honesty. And as God loves us, carry that love out into the world in peace, hope, and faith. Amen. Mm -hmm.